Hello and welcome to this episode of Kennedy Saves the World. It's Kamala Harris interview day. Yay! So what should Dana Bash at CNN ask Kamala Harris uh, when they talk with her emotional support llama Tim Walls later today? So it's, it's going to air tonight. It's taped. That means it will be edited. And if we find out that there was any chicanery, any, any shenanigans between CNN and the Kamala Harris campaign, uh, that's it. Disqualifying. She's done. She has to get out of the race. It also would be completely unsurprising. Um, so Dana Bash, uh, they, I believe CNN has scheduled her an MRI for tossing so many softballs. I think she gave herself a ligament strain. Um, which, you know, she is famous for. And I think one of the first things on the third anniversary of the horrific, botched, uh, murderous Afghanistan withdrawal, uh, she needs to ask Vice President Harris, are you still proud of the work you guys did? Because if you remember, Kamala Harris was bragging to Dana Bash about being the last person in the room and what a great job Joe Biden was doing with the Afghanistan withdrawal and how she was so proud of him and she has to ask her, are you still proud? Are you still proud of um, the, the 13 service members' families who will forever mourn their loved ones who were killed in a suicide attack by ISIS-K? Still proud of that one? Um, and it is one of those issues that voters and veterans still very, very much remember, not to mention those Gold Star families. And, you know, it, it's not like... Kamala Harris is terrified going into this context because, you know, this is the woman who essentially nailed Sleepy Joe's coffin shut uh, with that debate performance. Um, I will give her this. I thought that she and Jake Tapper were good debate moderators. Um, I know it is a tough job, but I, they thought that muting Trump's microphone was going to be the biggest layup for Joe Biden and having Trump not speak all the time uh, would frustrate him to the point of a temper tantrum when actually it made him look so much more measured. So I think that Team Trump, uh, they're probably going, God, I, I hope they do this for every debate. I hope they just shut him up so he doesn't score an own goal, which is really what the Trump campaign has to do at this point. So the the biggest worry for Kamala Harris is that she actually does well in this interview. And she, like any other human being, is capable of cogently answering questions. I don't think she's going to get too many of them of the tougher variety. But if she does well, no one's going to talk about it because she will have Tim Walls there. And it's also buried on a Thursday night at the beginning of Labor Day weekend. So people, you know, by and large... They're not sitting around watching TV on Labor Day. They're trying to get third degree burns from the sun as, uh, you know, that that sneaky glowing peanut is going to tuck itself away for the rest of the year. And so people are just going to be smothering themselves in baby oil and laying out. They're not going to be watching CNN. So they're really burying that. So if she does well, no one will be talking about it. Don't go anywhere. More Kennedy saves the world right after this. I think one of the most important questions that Dana Bash can ask of her is, who are you? I think Kamala Harris would have a really, really tough time answering that, especially if she is presented with some of these hypocritical stances that she has take, taken. You know, she she's made 180 turns on everything from energy to electric vehicles, not to mention the border and, you know, taxes on tips the administration was all for uh, going after service workers who would run afoul of, uh, you know, the, the tax laws in this country. And they were crafting policy to make nabbing them a, a more aggressive approach. So, you know, workers who are working for tips, they were the ones, you know, it wasn't Elon Musk and Warren Buffett who were going to meet their IRS maker. It was going to be, you know, waitresses and cab drivers. So now what's going to happen? It, she is going to have to answer, who are you? What does this mean? What do you really feel about all these things? And she has a guy there. She's hiding behind a man. Um, and look for Tim Walls to answer questions for her. 
which would be so condescending and offensive, but he is a beta soy boy, so I don't really think that Tim Walls is, uh, for the first time in his life, going to sprout a pair of nutlets and uh, answer chivalrously on her behalf. But I just think it's weird that she's there because this is her first main introduction to the world as a presidential candidate. And if you're running for president, if you're running for the most powerful job in the world, then you are saying, it's me, not me and this one guy from Minnesota. Um, she also needs to answer, what is Brat? And is Brat summer officially over? Uh, because that was a really stupid phenomenon that that seems to have evaporated. According to polling, she's only gotten a one poll, one point bounce from the convention. Uh, Politico, one of the writers at Politico, said that her speech was all sizzle and no steak. Uh, so she has to be pressed on her policy flip flops, what she actually intends to do when she governs, especially if she has a Democrat majority in Congress. So what does her agenda look like? Also, she has gone out on the stump and she has talked about how inflation has hurt Americans, hurt consumers in terms of things like groceries, ground beef, gas and rent because of Bidenomics. Then she also goes out and, and it was a brilliant campaign ad where they were contrasting Kamala on the stump going, things are too expensive. <laughs> Uh, and at the same time going, Bidenomics is working. It's like, if you're paying too much for food and rent and, uh, you know, the inflationary environment has made it so mortgages and loans are over 7%. And if you have been living on credit because things are so expensive, you can't pay your bills, uh, then you probably don't have the credit score to get a bank loan at all for a small business or a home. So how is Bidenomics working? And then she's got the proposal to give every first time home buyer $25,000. So what will that do for an inflationary environment? Because as you have seen, for people who assume that their student debt has been erased, uh, they're not paying their student loans back even when they have to. So why wouldn't the same thing happen in the housing market, because if people are assuming that, you know, they're getting this free money to make a down payment, you also might think there would be a little bit of a disconnect there. And people think, well, I guess I don't have to pay my mortgage either. So uh, that entire thing brings us into a massive, perfect storm of uh, a credit issue where the, the whole thing could fall apart and we could be heading toward a major recession if she employs any of uh, these wild vote grabs that she is promising people that would be so bad for the economy and, you know, so bad for people who are doing their damnedest to pay their bills, pay their rent, pay their mortgage on time because those people aren't getting any handouts from a, a woman like Kamala Harris who is so scared to sit for an interview that she has to bring her pet man. So I hope that Dana Bas Bash answers some of these questions. I'm very much looking forward to... Uh, what? Yeah, it's going to be a great scintillating interview on CNN. This has been Kennedy Saves the World. I'm Kennedy. Listen ad-free with a Fox News Podcast Plus subscription on Apple Podcasts and Amazon Prime members can listen to this show ad-free on the Amazon Music app. Oh, go ahead and leave me a review while you're there. I'd love to hear what you have to say. You've been listening to Kennedy Saves the World on the Fox News Podcast Network.